Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Last week, we were talking about meeting the directions of the compass as a way of engaging the internal organs and nourishing the internal organs. And um, so this week, I thought I'd take it back a step and talk a little bit about the, the important part of that equation, which is the meeting itself, what that, what that means. And it's something that, um, you know, particularly those of you who have followed along with this, there's, we all have some sense of, of meeting, but that's going to change depending on the circumstances you're in. And nobody has a full grasp of what that means in all circumstances. And so to understand exactly what we mean by it and, and how to find it when it's missing is I think a, a, probably the most important distinction to be made in between pedestrian martial arts and Kung Fu, you know, where you actually, you are embodying the, you know, the, the art and, uh, so that there's there's a leap there that comes with that, and that's because when we are in in a state of meeting, that is when we're engaged with our whole being, uh, then there is a we enter into a partnership with that which we are doing, that with which we are doing. So we're uh, we. Um, we engage in a partnership and, and it dissolves boundaries. So there's, there's a, we have a, a, a favored relationship with the world, with the environment, which is a subject object kind of relationship. That is, we think about it. Anytime we think about something, we have to naturally create uh, create it as an object. We have to see it as an object that is a, a mental object or something, a thought. We're representing something. And that creates distance between you and the thing you're, you're relating to, the person or thing you're relating to. So whenever we get into this state of meeting where you engage with your whole being with a, as a, in a partnership with that which you are meeting, it dissolves that distance and it creates this, this resonance that you're, you're resonating together. So that the coherence that you're feeling on, on, on in yourself is expands to the, a, a broader system of which you are now part. And so as a practical matter, for me, this is, this is what distinguishes high level martial arts. That is if your ability to break down that, that quarter to half a second there between the thought and the action, between the thought and uh, the event and, and the, the thinking about it. So whenever we're engaged in, in a, a rash, with our rational minds, there is always going to be that, that delay because we have to kind of put it into, into a... a a symbolic context that allows us to, to say, oh, this is like that other thing, you know, oh, gee, that smells like something burning, you know, we're, we're creating, uh, we're, in order to create meaning, there has to be a separation between that and the thing we're, we're thinking about. And so there's, there's two functions there. One is the creating a meaning, which is always going to put us outside of present time. And the actual event itself, where you're engaging with what's going on, and you are doing this little dance with with what's happening now. So, uh, you know, last week I talked about engaging, like say, you know, we did an exercise where you are you are meeting the 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 east. You're you're in the direction where you're actually allowing that big chi to, to fill you and to nourish your liver. And this extends to everything else. But 
we want to you know clarify exactly what we mean there by by this meeting. So there's different levels of, of, of understanding of it. And and if if I take a moment here to uh, to break down the essential parts of it, then you'll, you'll you'll get an idea at least of where I'm coming from. You know, I've been studying this stuff for decades, and you know, only a handful of you know, the, the great ones are even able to address this idea. And, and it, usually with, with insub, insufficient language to, to be able to talk about it. And uh, I wanna make it a little broader. I wanna make it something that's more accessible to all of us and, and to actually extend into our daily lives as well. So the, uh, the way I, I look at it there are four component parts of, of meeting that, um, and I kind of started to talk about it in uh, Finding You in a World of It, and then I've been thinking about it a little more lately. And uh, there's certain things that are implied in, 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 in there that, you know, I want to really kind of articulate now. So the, uh, the four component parts are coherence, that is a state of wholeness, a presence, which is the ability to occupy space and time. Um, engagement, that is where you encounter something that is not you and in a way that allows you to, to create this partnership. You're, you're meeting, you're engaging as a, uh, as a dance partner with whatever it is you're, you're talking about. So that that I distinguish that from using. So the uh, when when we're using something, we're or someone, we are we are making they have turned into an object. And whenever we are engaging them, where there's the they're no longer objectified, or at least they are less objectified than before. And the fourth step is context. That is in context. In this case, is it means what are the circumstances that create meaning? And so, and if we look at these four steps, not as, as a, um, a finite line, but as a continuum that just goes round and round and round. It's sort of a chicken and egg kind of, kind of thing that context precedes coherence, precedes uh, presence precedes engagement, precedes context, and so we we are a we are swimming in a sea of context. That is, our minds are going twenty four seven to create context. Even while you're asleep, your default mode network is churning away at the same level as it is during your day. It is trying to make sense of what's going on, and a lot of what we call dreaming. And uh, it just turning away. I'm, I, some of the most vivid memories I have, like say when I was 21 or 20 actually was, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't remember much else went on then, but I do remember when I was in a, uh, what is in a coma and the, what some of the, the things that I thought about my attempt to find meaning within, within that state of being unconscious for a week. And, uh, I still remember those. I remember probably better than most of the other things that were in a non-coma state. And um, I couldn't tell you what I dreamt about last night. So, uh, but the, uh, we're constantly looking for meaning. So we establish, we're going into something of meaning. So if I put it in a push hands context, I'm going into this exercise and I have a general idea of what it is we're trying to do. There's a, you know, there's a context that it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in a Tai Chi class and I'm going to play push hands. And so here, so I've done this before, so I can, I can go in, but then I immediately realized that, oh, I've never played with this person before. And what does push hands mean to them? And now I'm like, okay, I have to establish a new context to fit in the possibilities that, that could occur there. It might, it might, they may have the same kind of general idea, general patterning that I do, but maybe not. Maybe there's an entirely different game to them. 
Maybe they just want to to show that they can uh, they can dominate the world. So okay, that's their game. All right. So now that's a different context, and I have to deal with that. So I've established a context, and then from from there, I I get coherent. That is, I go into a state of wholeness, and we do that by conscious feeling, conscious doing. So what that what that, what that does, and, and the exercise I've of course shown you know thousand times, ten thousand times is you know to point and reach with your index finger is a way of of doing that fast because you can do it with feeling, reaching and feeling with anything. But the index finger has a prioritized relationship in your body mind. It, you've, you've, you've been working with this thing for a long time, whereas maybe reaching with your reaching and feeling your elbow is something that's it's a more recent kind of idea too, and maybe not something you would gravitate toward as, um, uh, as your go-to move if under pressure. So that feeling that going into that state of wholeness then allows you to then uh, move to the next step, which is to go into the present moment. And so I've, I've demonstrated in the past how it's easy to go from coherence into, into presence so much so that it appears sometimes that they're, they're the same thing, but they're not. There is a change that occurs whenever you occupy the space and time that's um, dictated by the context. So what I'm saying there is you have to, to be present, you, you want to be there for the game that you are playing. And, uh, you know, let's say uh, Joe is walking down the street, he's got his, uh, his Beats headphones on and he's, you know, kind of grooving along, and it's a busy street. Uh, he doesn't even pay attention. He walks out, and there's cars whizzing by. Joe is not present with the the game of walking down the street. He's present with the music, perhaps, but in that case, he could be present with anything. But in the context we mean it, we want present with the game that you're playing. So if the important game is not getting killed, uh, then... You, Joe wants to have some attention on the fact that there is there's a truck bearing down on him, and that's that's kind of a, a, a key point right there. So he has to know where he is, and he has to have some association with now. In terms of our kung fu, we sharpen that so that we are able to be present with the, this, this moment and to be able to locate ourselves in space and time non-objectively. That is, we're not thinking about, oh, hey, it's uh, April, uh, May 2nd and I'm sitting in here in Staten Island. That's, that's a story that takes us out of the present moment. There is here and there's now. And being able to, to locate that is part of the deal with that. And part of the deal is getting your body, mind, spirit all on the same page. So if your attention is in, you know, often the, in the, the music sphere that is created by the headphones on your head, and you're not actually, say, you're not there in English class when, when your teacher is calling roll, you're not present. You are, even though your body is there, you are somewhere else. So getting your fine tuning your awareness so that you can become more present follows your ability to go into a state of wholeness. The more you're able to occupy your body mind and create this, get your mind and your, your physicality on the same page, the more you're capable of going into that present moment. And then once you've established that, you are able to, uh, to then extend out from that. Prior to that moment, prior to that, having those two steps in, whenever you encounter someone else, if you're not really you 
And if you're not really here now, then whatever engagement you have with the rest of the world is going to be run through the filter of whatever your mind is churning out at that moment. So getting the, the those two together, guided by your eye of spirit, then you are then able to encounter someone or something else with your whole being. And then we go to step four, which is back to context. Like, okay, now what's going on now? What is the game I'm playing now? And that goes around and around. So it follows a, a sequence, but it's a circular pattern and that it goes around and around and, you know, and many different directions because you're playing multiple games at the same time. And uh, so with that as our, our framework, then we can, we can start to play with that. We can start to actually do some work with it. And it enables us to, to also find where, where we're missing. If we're not getting it, whatever it may be, you know, the purpose of an exercise or something where, you know, I am, I'm not feeling this thing. Okay, well, go back and figure out which part of this is missing in order to, to really fully engage that, uh, the, you know, the activity that you're in. So uh, that's a lot of words. Uh, any thoughts, questions, corrections, arguments? Peter. Yeah, minor, minor point. Uh, I'm understanding context as the um, sort of the living situation. Is situation a good, I mean, the um, a good synonym for context? That, that, that's a, a sin, except for the situation we want to, there's an implied meaning. Something that context has, it, it implies that you understand something about that. Your mind is constantly seeking meaning in these things. You know, even whenever you know you're waking up from being in, asleep, you know, it's like, oh, you know, you're you're seeking to locate yourself and and find you know the the meaning of the, of the oh, I just woke up. Okay, time to get out of bed. Whatever it is, whatever story you tell yourself. So it's creating. You're weaving a narrative for yourself that allows you to understand your circumstances. So situation uh, kind of takes us in that direction, but it, uh, it doesn't yet tell us that, you know, that we care, that, that we're curious about it. Okay. Um... You know, also just sort of a um, to mention it quickly at the you know at the beginning I I've been I was thinking to to you know lately to raise the the question maybe I asked this already you talked about recently you talked about reaching in a very in a way that was very helpful and I had the sense of that reaching was not just a sort of technical maneuver for example with the crown of your head but it was it was through the crown of it your head you're reaching from something like your heart mind from your reaching from your whole being um and with and you also explained reaching is to connect to something so i'm wondering about that as a under the third step that is meeting you know that is the the encounter that is yeah, your re reach, reaching as meeting. You're extending from your wholeness to something else. Yeah, and, and so that's both reaching and meeting. So reaching. Well, meeting is the whole broad, the whole broad thing there. Is it, uh, so the uh, reaching is as with the intention of meeting. You know, I see. The, so there's a, you know, it's taking us in the direction. That is the, okay. the part of it that we have moved from, from establishing a form to create contact with something that is exterior to the form that we are occupying. Right. And so that's where, oh, we're, we're extending outward. So we're saying, hey, you, 
you want to dance? And there we go. And, or you want to play put your hands or whatever. So that so there is an extension, but it starts with, with your, with establishing your state of being. Nick, you yeah, have something. Correct. Yeah, um, the context versus situation um, intrigues me, in, and I'm not sure this is right, but it sounds as though, in a way, context precedes situation. Context, if, if I'm hearing what you're saying right, context is you're constantly looking for context. You're, you're constantly seeking context. So that's kind of an active state. And when you acknowledge a situation, that's, that comes as a result of seeking context. Yeah, um, I'd say situation would be part of context. It's like, you know, sort of like the, I think context is, you know, is the who, what, where, when, why, how of, of any situation. And, you know, sit, you know so situation is a, uh, uh, describes some aspects of that, but it's a, I'm, I'm happy to look at that, that, that word as, as a, as a possibility, but for me, it, it connotes something a little more um, uh, so. Rick, what's that? Would it? Would it? Would it? The situation. The context is I'm walking down an alley, and there's somebody walking toward me, and the situation is I'm in trouble because that person is dangerous, or is that too much meaning? Uh, I, I think all that's. Part of context. Okay. Okay. You know, so it's like, how do, how does this fit into my story? Basically, what what context means is how do how do these events, you know, these situations, whatever they may be, how do they fit in with my story? How does this relate to moi? And that's what our default mode network is doing, moment by moment by moment, until we decide not to, until we go, until we create some gaps between the thoughts. We move out of that. It is a survival mechanism that we inherited that you know keeps us keeps us and our our uh, our fellow human beings alive, and but it also kind of is distracting sometimes. So, Richard, um, I, I just want to review a little bit: um, coherence, presence, engagement. Context is something that is overlaying or underwriting all of this all the time. So we don't achieve context by the first three steps. Right, the, uh, the actual attention on context is a step that I see is not permeating, but it, it kind of creates a, a, a foundation for, and then you move outside of context building for a moment as you establish those those other three steps, and then you move back into context. At least the way I perceive it, it's a uh, it it they're in the whenever you're in a state of coherence, when you're pr fully present, when you're engaging with your whole being, context goes out the window. You're not thinking about the moment. You're not building a story or a narrative about the moment. For that, you are you've stepped outside of that context building. And then you go back and say, what just happened? And then you go back to building context again. Okay, so we're, um, I, I think that we're attempting to create an ideal state and we're, we're now thinking of, based upon any context, we move through the steps to create an ideal state if we can get there then the context is going to change, and we start over again. Context um, is constantly we're, changing. We're all we're always starting over again Precisely. because we can't achieve a state and have it just sit there. So, right. There is no perfect well, state. There's no perfect state. There is just just the next context. Okay. You know, you know, okay. It's just like, okay. I even like 
Yeah, you're yeah, like, just next context, like, what game am I playing now? You know, right. I, I'm I being like that. Totally transcendent right now. I'm whatever. You know, right. that's that's the game. You know, you're just and okay. Now what? You know, I'm, and, I'm and, always I'm always trying to remember that we're always resetting this game. You know, <laughs> I, seems like that to me. Seems like that to me. Yeah, Scott. So. Um, you know, as you were talking, I was, you know, doing this and it just, I just got, just realized this, that it's weird, right? When you're really doing it, when you're really getting it, it's weird. And I know it's because this has been happening more and more lately. It's like, everything just seems weird, right? And I realized, and I realized that's what it is. Well, like right now, right? I'm focusing on you, right? But you're one dimensional, but you're really not one dimensional. You're 3,000 miles away, but you're in my living room. I've been in that living I've been in your living room. It's all just everything. It's just weird. And I guess that's maybe a, maybe that's a good selling point, right? Is what it feels weird. You've got it, right? I, I think that it shows you're on, <laughs> heading in the right direction. If it ain't weird, then it ain't real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everything, all, everything all at once. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter. Uh, I have a question about about how it is that uh, context supports further coherence. And I'm beginning to, while we're talking, it's beginning to make sense to me. But that was the question that I've been wanting to ask. How how does context support greater coherence? Okay, that's a really good question. So it. Um... If we consider that we're moving from one context to another and we are creating through our inquiry, through our curiosity, we're trying to create better states than what we have now. You know, if you if your thing is going to the gym to, to make a better you or to read a book or to play an instrument or whatever, you're trying to create a better. So you're creating a new state state a new wholeness you're playing a different game and so the the peter that emerges from that exercise whatever it may be is not going to be the same peter that went into it it's going there's going to be the new wholeness has to include all the stuff that preceded that all the information all the intention all the energy that went into that uh, that exercise is now part of the new improved Peter 2.0. So it's uh, so and and that is so the the coherence is any time anything that's alive can be said to be coherent, at least in the content, at least in the way I'm describing it. And we're talking about enhancing coherence. We're talking about taking something which is to some degree. Uh, imperfect and making it function together at a, at a higher order of functionality of organization function together more smoothly. And so as long as we move in that direction, we are using our mind intent, our E, that is your eye of spirit is imposing on your world this desire to improve, desire to make better and it's, it does that by first getting whole and then moving on to step two, which is getting present. And step three, which is engaging the world. And then what just happened? What's my context? Ah, rinse, repeat, and goes around and around. And we keep, we keep doing that so that, that it becomes a, uh, uh, a pattern which is it's an evolutionary pattern. That is, it is evolving. It can go the other direction as well, where you can move toward more and more non-coherence, which is actually the way the world is set up before consciousness, before the eye of spirit enters into it, is moving in the direction of, of entropy. entropy. You know, it's moving to the direction of collapse, of energy dissipating, not to be ever recovered again, that kind of thing. And so it's whenever awareness, whenever this eye of spirit enters into it, it says, okay, the world is 
falling apart, but I can create new stuff with this, with all the stuff that's falling apart. And I can create new forms with that. And then each of those new forms will take on their own coherence and then moving forward with that. So that uh, it's, it's a way of looking at the game. I, I didn't quite get, I mean, I, I, it makes, it rings true to me and I'm getting the, uh, the sort of the sense of how these, these four, you know, work together <laughs> cyclically, that rings true, but I'm not quite getting how the enhanced, um, a new context or an enhanced context um, s supports the enhancement of coherence. Uh, I, I I'm starting to think of it like a, um, you know, like it's an analogy, like a mold for a, um, you know, a scaffolding for a work of art sort of thing. The context it provides the, uh, the, the, you know, the, a structure that supports the wholeness of being or the coherence of a work of art that the, 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 um, the context is a sort of a structural support for the process of making coherence, but I'm just guessing um, what, uh, yeah, did, did, you say, say, did you say, did, you, you can't really separate from your context. So that's right. all part of wholeness. But, but have you, did I miss it? Have you explained how, how uh, a, the context that you find, um, you know, leads to the, you know, it how doesn't. it leads to the it, enhancement it of coherence? It doesn't. Oh, it, just, okay. it, just, it just establishes a new game. It says, oh, we got a new okay. game now. So okay, now you so have to start, you just, you have to start over again. again. You start over again, you get coherent again. And you, okay. you, and you and you play that and you go and then and then rinse and repeat. Okay, so there isn't necessarily a progression in the quality or degree of coherence. There can be, but there can that, be, but that requires your intent. You have to decide to do that. It doesn't happen by itself. Okay, okay, I'm getting it. Thank you. Richard. Um, I'm just thinking that um, what we are hopefully attempting to achieve is to be is to get better and better at adapting to every new context, and every new context is by its is by its nature a little more complicated than the last one because they're cumulative. Right. So but our our goal is to get better at making this trip. At putting these steps together, uh, so that our adjustment to it is quicker and quicker, right? And and it would be, as I said, by nature more complex every time. So, Could, couldn't it couldn't it get simpler sometimes? Couldn't the context become simpler if you discern a kind of um, a sort of uh, deeper unity? Couldn't that be? Couldn't the context be simplified if you you find the wholeness of the of the the world that you're in? Well, what Richard's trying to say is that is that even that includes all the information that came before it. So even even if you your conscious mind summarizes it and says, "Hey, all is one," that's your that's your you know, your your you know. Your, your, your big answer to the world, it still includes everything that went into that. So it is more, you know, even though the conclusion itself is a fairly simple one, the all that that that's supporting it, all the discarded information is still part of that, the, the complexity that is that is you. You're building on previous experience. Wait, there's a there's probably is a taxonomy to context, but I think that's beyond the scope the scope of this practice. I think there's just it, it, everybody's going into their heads trying to explain it instead of you know trying to feel it or experience it. What? So maybe um, we could stop you, telling you, a story about meeting and maybe try and, and get get do, do an exercise. Yeah. I think you're right. 
I think you're right. I think we're uh, kind of at that point where we can uh, uh, we can kind of move on and 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 do uh, do have some fun with it. All right. So why don't you stand up, please? All right, let's begin applying this to something that is familiar to a lot of you, which is, you know, the three pillars. And so we're, let's just feel that we'll go on to something else. So first, let's, uh, let's establish coherence. Let's follow the pattern that we're talking about there. That is, we're going to enhance the coherence. You're already coherent, but we want to take it deeper. We want to establish that. So we so just feel your point and reach and feel your index fingers and feel your hands, feel all the sensations there. So just bringing your body, your mind to those physical sensations, your feeling as a way of bringing your body and mind together and getting them so that the, you have reduced the lag time between the event and thinking about the event. And you're moving away from the thinking about the event and into just feeling it. It is, you know, just notice the sensations without naming them. So that's step one, we're establishing our coherence. So there's a state of wholeness that we've created here. So now we want to locate this wholeness that is you in space and time. And we orient to, from the one comes the two. So the, we're going to create the up and down, the we're going to feel into your feet, feel the balls of your feet and feel yourself sinking into the earth. So we've got these two big poles, the earth and the heavens. So feel into your feet and reach up and with your the crown of your head and and feel into the heavens, feel into all the insubstantiality above you and feel the, the density and support of the substantiality below you. And we're orienting to those two points. And by having awareness of both of them simultaneously, we are establishing two points in opposition, two poles in opposition, and that creates an energy flow. In this case, it also, well, that we're, I don't wanna to get too far ahead here. So we wanna reach with the crown of the head, tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate, the base of the skull, relax your lower back and drop your sacrum. We've established our context here by feeling the earth, feeling the sky. We've established coherence. We've established our position in space. And more importantly, in now. So that is our time element. It's, that is where we're occupying now. That is our attention is where the point where the body and mind are intersecting and creating this moment where you are not off in your thoughts elsewhere, but you're right here, right now.
and spiral down, release your quad, your hip, hip joints, reach with your elbows, feel, feel that direction, feel that, that expansion, reaching, still reaching with the fingers, feel the fingernails and feel the, feel what's going on in your body as you do this, opening the shoulder joints. So we've established our coherence and our presence. Now we extend our awareness through the feet and into the earth. Then through the crown of the head into the heavens, through the elbows and into the space surrounding us. And just feel the whole space around you. So what we're now doing is we're meeting our environment our circumstances, our situation. We're establishing this relationship with something that extends beyond the form that we created when we created the coherence of the body-mind. So we're going to resonance with something bigger. This allows us to exchange with the big chi the chi of the heavens, the chi of the earth, the chi of the five directions, the elements, the chi of the yin and the yang. And so as I'm talking here, I'm establishing a context for this event. But in between that, there's there's a space between the time the thoughts appear and the time, between the time the th one thought disappears and the next thought arises, thought appears to your mind. And sometimes we can stretch that gap between thoughts to a very long period. And as we do that, we're more and more in the present moment as we enter into that. But then we say, okay, what's going on here? We create context, we create a, we think about this, this shape, this, this, okay, what are we going to do now? What's, what's happening? What is this energy? All these, these thoughts, these curiosities appear, and that's perfectly natural and normal. But we have the capacity to park all that, let it go, and re-enter the, the eternal present, the now. And we can do that over and over again. And we can also leave it and go into thinking about making sense of this whole mess. And then go back again. So let's take this and let's continue. We're going to meet the yin chi. Uh, feel your wrists, reach with the wrists, the fingers, reach with your elbows. Feel very slowly. So you can feel the heaviness of your arms. You can feel the pull of the earth on your hands, on your fingers, pulling it down. You're relaxing your muscular tension and allow the sung to enter in. That is, you're releasing into the intrinsic structure of your body-mind. Reach down with your elbows, bend the wrists, and very slowly, and feel the pull of the earth as your hands are being pulled down. And you intentionally are pumping the brakes on that. You're saying, not so fast, hands. We're gonna 
feel into this process, you're intentionally overriding that pull of the earth. And that intentionally overriding it creates its own energy. Feel into your hands now. Feel the, feel the chi that is, that is building up there. So now feel your wrists, reach with the wrists. Reach with the elbows, relax your hands. Just feel, just very slowly. Feel that. You feel the, the weight. Feel the earth pulling on your arms. And then feel the weight, feel the earth pulling on the rest of your body. And then round your arms, bring your fingers so that they're facing each other. Reaching out with your elbows, very soft. Nothing tense. And usually I have you feeling into the balls of your feet. Now I want you to rock back into your heels. And uh, just feel yourself being pulled down. Feel the heaviness, the density. And this is where we meet the earth. We're going down, down, down to meet the earth. We're sinking in. We're not, but we're just kind of allowing yourself to, to blend with that pull. You've established a structure that allows you to keep standing, but you're saying, what's the minimum amount of, of muscular tension to maintain the structure. Feel that heaviness. So this is the, the yin chi of the earth. And as we do this, you become part of a bigger system. where the form that you have here that you created your body mind in this situation is a very small part of the larger system that you're plugged into now. You're a flea on the back of a big dog. Just feel that anytime you have your, you find yourself stuck in your head. Your, your thoughts are racing, you're, you're feeling tense or anxious, irritable. Just, oh, just allow that to, to cleanse. So this posture allows you to clean out. You're just dumping. Anything that you don't need is dumping through the balls of your feet, through the, uh, actually through the bubbling well points in your feet and into the earth. And allowing that to be digested. At the same time that the, the earth is giving you a big hug and you're feeling that, feeling that, that pull there, not on you as a separate object, but as just including you in the big system. Rotate your palms. Bring your hands down. And just feel into the density. Feel your arms unwinding 
as the earth is lengthening and your muscles are relaxing. Uh, we keep establishing a context for what's going on here. We say, what's going on now? What's that feeling? But then we go back and say, oh, let's get coherent again. And you're not very far away because you're right there, but you can just feel your index fingers and enhance the coherence, even in this heightened state you're in right now. You can take it up to another level. Include all that energy and information that we just processed, we just ran through. The mind is able to grasp a tiny, tiny fragment of what is going on right now. It wants to summarize it into some clever little headline that it can remember later. But the actual event itself is far beyond anything we can talk about. Can we wrist, reach with the wrists, reach with the elbows, feel the heaviness in the arms, feel the, feel the earth hugging you, meeting, engaging you, palms, palms facing you, fingers pointing at each other, reaching at the elbows, but very soft, letting go. And all the while you want to keep a little piece of your attention reaching up to the crown of your head. So even in all this yin, there's still a light of, of yang reaching up there. Sink into your heels and feel yourself just moving deeper and deeper into that heaviness, into that yin. We do this because we're, we tend to focus on the yang more. Here I am making more context. We're, we tend to focus on the yang more. So to actually explore the depth of yin gives us a frame of reference. We're not saying that this is the ideal state. We're just saying that this is when we separate the two, the yin and the yang, we can accentuate one of the poles and create a different kind of energy this way. Feel the cleansing that's going on. Feel the energy just moving through you. You want to feel the loud gun points in the palms of your hands. Reach with the with the knee one. Feel yourself sinking, allowing the energy to move through the bubbling well points in the in your feet. Palms down and very slowly allow your hands to sink. Feel the pull. Also notice that you're controlling the pull. Just pause and feel into your body mind. Notice the thoughts. 
as they appear. Step in, take a deep breath, and disappear the chi. Please take a seat. <laughs> Rick. Has anyone else ever floated in the Great Salt Lake? <laughs> I have not. Well, the Great Salt Lake, of course, has such a sodium content that you don't sink. And that's the closest thing I can experience to this. I was, I was part of the sea. I was part of the water. I was part of the sky. I was mm. in and of myself. And all I did was float. I didn't wow. think I was taking the whole experience was like this experience. I felt the waves of the energy very slowly, lovingly mm. lapping through me, not mm. over me, through me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, I didn't, there were no thoughts intruding because all I had to do was float. Mm. I didn't have to fight it, force it. All I had to do was flow with it. And it was extraordinary. I mean, again, I'm trying to figure out, it was like an up and down elevator at the same time. It just flowed through me this way and then this way and then this way. It's the best Oh, it was the best. <laughs> <laughs> that was exquisite. <laughs> it was exquisite. It was. Thank you. It was exquisite. <laughs> Brilliant. Nick. Well, I'm jealous because, I mean, <laughs> if I had been in the Salt Lake, I'd have been on the bottom. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was uh, definitely solid, uh, heavy moment. Just heavy, man. Heavy, <laughs> heavy man. <laughs> Boy, a lot of a lot of things tonight are reminding me of the '60s. You know, <laughs> far far out. Groovy, wow. man. <laughs> You're saying something, Lynn? <laughs> You're saying something, Lynn? No, okay. Uh, Valerina. Um, yes, the experience was was wonderful. And there was a point, it was like, I wanted you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, no, I mean, your direction was great, but, you know, I, uh, blah. Cause I, I wanted was, me to shut up too, but... <laughs> I had to, well, you're supposed to be the teacher, so you can't shut up, right? <laughs> but that, that no thought, you know, being between the thoughts, you know, was, and uh, maybe everybody else has gotten this or had this thought, but as we were, you know, releasing, you know, closing out, I realized for me, because it's never quite, it's like, I don't quite get that releasing everything, you know, it, it didn't quite compute for me, but I got what it is, is I have to release the attachment to what I just experienced. And that was a huge outcome 
of this whole thing. I mean, yeah. it brings tears to my eyes because it's so simple, but that's what it, that's what works for me. So yeah. Exquisitely, ex exquisitely said, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. That's a, that's an important observation. And, uh, and it kind of going this deep into the yin allows you to say, oh, that's what I'm looking for when I do this. I'm looking for that level of down that, uh, so yeah, Richard. I, I was just gonna say, I, this had, I've never heard this, I, I guess, probably I have, but uh, just the phrase resisting the pull of the yin was suddenly very dramatic to me. It was like, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very powerful. Thank you for that. Oh, you're, that's great. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. Scott. Yeah, kind of, kind of most of what, you know, ditto to what Rick said. Um, but uh, there was, um, yeah, a new, new experience of yin that was just, I mean, the only word that I can use is it was just like a clarity. I mean, I guess maybe it's a clarity of the energy, but, you know, all that letting go and, uh, Wow, just, um, I'm going to try and, uh, it goes back to what you were saying about, you know, now take what I just learned and that's, you know, that's part of me now. And I, I definitely want to try and uh, try and bring that feeling of yin into my form and hell into everything I can. Great. Great. Peter. Yeah, a little earlier, I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, I really like, you know, talking about meeting as a, with a partner, as a dance with a partner, the way you have. And, uh, and I was thinking that you, you have explained a lot about what we do, you know, in the dance, but not so much what the partner is doing. Uh, but now I'm thinking that, that tonight, we, you know, this was sort of a demonstration of what the what the part how the partner is dancing with us, especially Rick Myers, your uh, experience, right? Your 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 partner really responded in the dance, I think. <laughs> no, my part. No, you have to understand, my partner was me. I can't read anybody else's mind but my own, and that I don't so, try uh, because I can't. But I can't you know read, that... so I do it all the time. That's philosophical. <laughs> and, 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 and true. <laughs> but we, yeah. but, but hold on a second. Um, Everybody's frozen but me. Are, aren't huh. we, aren't we, I don't know. Uh, you know, as the meeting develops and comes to life, doesn't the, the partner, doesn't our dance partner respond in richer ways and more vital ways to us? You hope so, but there's no there's no guarantee on that. You have no control no. over that. No, I mean meeting, meeting what is no. you're meeting meeting the partner, however the partner is, and if your partner is responsive, great. If your partner is non-responsive, also great. You are still meeting. It's not it's not required that that you have uh, a partner who reciprocates to the degree that you are. I only have responsibility for myself. I cannot control anybody else. But well, I'm it's not, it's not what control. Else does. I'm not talking about control. Um, you know, it's well. Your meeting sends out an invitation. Yeah. You say, your your meeting says, "Would you like to dance?" The other yes. person, thing, whatever, can say yes, no maybe later you know right 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 so so you have no you have no no control over that and and even if they say no you can still meet you're not you're not you're not limited by your partner's choice yep i'm i'm still dancing <laughs> right you're still dancing Clear. and exactly. and rick your your part your partner has the option to participate or not right but it's still it's still well, the again you. i can't control still the you who's, me. it's still the it's you still who's the partner but you don't have control of it yeah. 
Yeah, you, you're cool. I do have control of the most, the most important partner in my life, which is me. That I have control of. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, anybody else? We've run over a bit. Uh, thank you all so much. That was a lot of fun. And yeah. uh, thank you all so much for your comments. Appreciate it. And, I'll, I'll see uh, you all in the Great Salt Lake. <laughs> blum, blum, blum. <laughs> you're gonna hey listen nick you're gonna try but you will not sing you'll try, you won't all right there's, I got you. there's there's very there's very little water there now yeah. a lot of salt a lot of salt all right thanks, nick. thanks Maria. love you guys see you Thank next you, Maria. <laughs>